Hello everyone, my name is Łukasz Stelmach and I work as a software engineer in Samsung R&D Center in Warsaw. For the past decade in a team of fine engineers, I've been responsible for lower layers of user land software in Tizen operating system. Today I'm going to present the work we did this spring to upgrade our system D package. Uh, I will show, share a few interesting problems we had to solve and some general conclusions regarding package maintenance in a GNU Linux distribution. Regarding questions, I'd be more than glad to answer them. However, if you could be so kind and ask them at the end. Uh, let me begin with a brief, uh, brief introduction of Tizen. It is a GNU Linux distribution de uh, designed uh, in cooperation of Samsung and Intel a uh, few years back for smart devices. The system comprises uh, of three uh, main software layers, Linux kernel, GNU user land, and Tizen proper, which provides a Wayland-based graphic interface and a number of frameworks for writing applications. Uh, where can we find Tizen? Uh, there were some phones, not very successful. Some watches, noticeably more successful, but Tizen was eventually replaced with Wear OS. TV sets, quite successful, and refrigerators. Some robot platforms were developed too, but as far as I know, those weren't consumer products. Tizen images for different ARM and the RISC-V based single board computers uh, as well as RPM packages and various tools are available at downloadtizen.org. Uh, the first Tizen release to use uh, Systemd was Tizen 2.0, released in February 2013, which probably made uh, Tizen one of the first distributions to adopt Systemd full on. The oldest system decode imported in our repos uh, repositories I could find was uh, V43. In 2020, we upgraded to V244. Uh, at that time, there were 119 commits upstream originating in either Polish or Korean parts of our team. Not a huge contribution, but a noticeable one, I guess. It included some nice features like socket activation of USB functions and a number of tiny fixes. Uh, we didn't upgrade further until this year. With over 100 of our own commits on top of D244 and 26,000 upstream, that's 20 commits a day for four years. Guys, when do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> we knew we had some serious problems. Uh, they weren't obvious, though. We didn't need any of new features that much. We had some backported commits, but not many. The new features weren't uh, targeted and embedded systems we developed anyway. Product divisions in our company were kind of happy with what V244 provided, and products moved slowly. There was no direct pressure to, to upgrade, so that's why it took so long to, to decide. Let me digress a little uh, here and describe how we maintain packages of upstream software. This isn't revolutionary by any means, just one of many ways distributions do it. We keep the source code in, a Git, reposi uh, in Git repositories. It is either a clone of an upstream repository or a series of release tarball imports. On top of an uh, upstream release, we've got the Tizen branch, which comprises a spec file in a separate directory called packaging, and all the patches we need applied to that branch. And during an upgrade, we rebase the Tizen branch onto the new release. This way, we maintain the whole history of changes we have ever made to, to a package. In most cases, this is desired. We can trace our decisions easily. However, in case of more active projects, the amount of code on uh, the branch may get out of control. It took systemd package somewhere between seven and eight years to reach that state, but it happened and we had to change our workflow. More on that later. 
uh, as the Tizen branch in the system D package grew without pruning, we stopped rebasing it on to new releases, but rather merged, merged them. This result, uh, the, the resulting code was the same, and there appeared to be less conflicts to resolve upon each upgrade. In case of system D, the branch had become quite significant because it comprised not only usual distro-specific tweaks, but for reason far beyond the scope of this presentation, we also kept KDBus code. Here, our technical debt, star uh, debt starts to appear. It was there earlier, but we tried not to notice it. Here's what we did. <coughs> and did. <coughs> We converted the merge commits on the Tizen branch, along the Tizen branch, to normal ones with a single parent, uh, as if snipped them from the upstream branch. Uh, we were once again able to rebase the whole branch onto a new release. I haven't tried rebasing uh, branch with merge commits, but uh, as far as my experience with cherry picking goes, uh, Git sometimes makes strange de decisions and we wanted to be in control of the process, even if it meant more manual work. Just before rebasing, we temporarily, uh, we temporarily dropped KDBus, or at least as much of it as we could find, uh, then rebased, and the next significant step was to find related commits uh, along the history, for example, related to our, uh, to our own logging system, which we developed over time, and squash them together. Build, test, amend, rinse, repeat. Here is the debt we had to deal with. Over 300 commits, uh, reverted features, Tizen features, missing services, uh, mod probe uh, add service missing from our allow list in the build system, call manager service went uh, AWOL, uh, and, you know, the list, this is the list of m more interesting things, most not more notable things. The last one was fun. We quickly ported the, uh, the KDBus kernel module to, to a new kernel, but uh, didn't test it enough at the time. And uh, different people made that port, so, so we didn't communicate uh, good enough. Uh, in the meantime, Linus uh, decided uh, to change kernel cup T structure. He moved away from an array of two U32 values to a single U64 because KDBus meta cups structure in the module isn't marked as packed, its uh, layout has changed. Uh, a padding after last cup field appeared to align the kernel cup T fields to eight bytes. System D was unable to parse the CAPS item received from the kernel and refused to e execute several commands like daemon reload. In fact, we were quite lucky uh, if System D allowed the commands at that stage, we wouldn't notice the problem at all. We decided to copy the contents of the new kernel CAP uh, T values into the old uh, KDBus meta uh, CAPS uh, U32 values to avoid changes to user land code in nobody knows how many places. In the end, we've got down to 76 commits on top of V255, including KDBus and GVariant reverts. We fixed a number of regressions introduced by upstream changes to, to internal APIs and to data structures. One of the more interesting was the removal of alignment parameter, parameter in one of message assembly functions which uh, was used for G variant. The symptoms weren't obvious. Some, G, uh, some DBus requests, exa for example, to pulse audio, succeeded. Some didn't, for example, to login uh, D. And the receiving code, uh, the, the, the code that made the request crashed. I ended up printing the offending response messages on a piece of paper and learning to parse G variant with a bunch of highlighters. <laughs> We've also managed to contribute some code upstream, which fixed how system the executor handles capabilities. 
the introduction of the introduction of uh, system the executor caused uh, a serious regression for us as we run a session manager with elevated effective and permitted capabilities but with ambient capabilities dropped so that the services don't inherit uh, them by accident everything worked, uh, worked fine before the executor because when a service was started, the forked part of system D that was about to call exec V still had effective uh, per and permitted sets inherited from the session manager and was able to adjust them for the service. Alas, when system D executor appeared, it didn't have necessary cap uh, capabilities because of the exec V being called uh, almost right after fork in POSIX spawn used to start system D uh, executor. Because libc uh, lacks the capability to, to control ambient capabilities in POSIX spawn, we had to do a rather dirty hack, restore uh, the ambient capabilities before spawning uh, the exe executor, start the executor with POSIX spawn, and then drop the capabilities back again. Uh, although system, uh, and drop them, properly adjust them in the uh, executor before spawning the, the, the service. Although system, the executor was released in uh, V255 we were working with, I figure there aren't many users who run a session manager with and session services uh, with elevated capabilities. Otherwise, we wouldn't be the first to, to report the problem. Anyway, huge th thanks uh, for the support in developing the patch to, to the System D uh, team. Back to the debt. Final, finally, we also decided to change our maintenance procedures I mentioned before. Uh, alas, we haven't walked away debt free. Uh, we've marked the old capabilities option we use in, uh, in Tizen as obsolete, which should make its user switch to new configuration options. We still have to maintain KD bus and two new reverts. If I were to generalize the, uh, and point out some sources of the debt, I'd say, I'd say bad decisions were made. KD bus looked promising and was an answer to our questions back at the time, but maybe we asked the wrong questions. Uh, at the technical level, we had to catch up with the changes in internal uh, interfaces and data structures introduced upstream. While as engineers we can't always prevent bad des uh, decisions, we can learn how to better handle their consequences. Uh, what's important, we are uh, pushing for a new maintenance model uh, with our you know, team leaders. Until now, we kept all, our, all of our commits ever made intact during the rebase upgrade process. Apparently, it is not, no longer possible and we need to focus on features the, commit pro, uh, the commits provide rather than the history of their development. It's not exactly a new model for us because the team that maintains the kernel repositories have practiced it for years, but it is somewhat new for us. We are going to have two branches in Git, Tizen and Tizen Next. The former will be the source for packages built and distributed automatically. Uh, it will collect fixes, tweaks, and backports as before. The latter will be based, uh, rebased often, every release, maybe every stable release, Commits are going to be moved around and squashed, and when time comes, it will be ready to become the new stable branch. And of course, we will push upstream as many commits as possible. And I think I managed in time. <laughs> Very good with time, thank you. I'd like... I'd like to thank my colleagues in the office. Their support during this task was priceless. I also would like to thank the System D team. They are awesome. Uh, thank you. Some of we, us are angry. We, 
we don't contribute very often, so we are not always up to date with the latest practices in the project, and they always explained everything patiently. Uh, so it wasn't me then that answered you. <laughs> Thank you for coming here. It's not early. I thought it will, the talk will be earlier. I hope it was a little, at least a little bit interesting. Are there any questions that have survived? Or maybe you just want to, to say, no, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so uh, what do you think Systemd upstream could be doing to make your life easier? Uh, I don't know, not, not much really, because the, the, we, we have to see with the new maintenance, package maintenance model how, how, will, how will it work, because uh, what we do, we answer to, to our, let's say, internal clients in the company, they say, we want, ver we want it upgraded, and then we upgrade. And until now it worked fine like until 2.44. And then they didn't want to upgrade, they didn't want to spend our time to do it, so we got a little big, bit back. And uh, not really, you, you do a great job. <laughs> so. Some of us do. <laughs> so I'm quite glad to hear that I managed to break another distribution with Executor. Yes. <laughs> I hope there's a third one go to for, for the hat trick. Um, you mentioned you reverted some commits. Is that systemd commits? Uh, yes. Which ones are they? I don't remember the ashes. <laughs> uh, Just curious. What's uh, uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the capabilities, uh, the removal of uh, capabilities option. We still have uh, have oh. this, but we have this marked as obsolete, and the warning message appears. So uh, during the test and so on and so on, uh, in CI it appears to to users, and they are urged to this. This makes them move to, to, to new options, and several others related to KD bus and, and, uh, and the G variant, because they were removed, sep the, these two features were removed uh, kind of separately. So, so, this so is your pain points are managing your additional changes on top of the upstream 3, is that basically the main thing? Yes, okay. Okay. yes. Okay. yes. So uh, I'm sorry I came in late. Well, when you when you're talking about capabilities, is it like you know set cap on executables? Okay, cool. Uh, not on executables, but uh, on the process uh, processes. We set caps on uh, on file systems, but that's another that's another story. That's that's like kind of out of scope okay. here. Uh, this system, the executor, was uh, there was a problem in uh, in process capabilities in running, just to avoid setting caps on file systems. So, that's so, like so you set the capabilities when you launch the process. Yes, but so we still have two minutes. So, is that an old feature that was removed? I can't even remember. We have ambient caps now. Uh, ambient capabilities. The setting. Yes, but oh. they they work differently, and we still have some services that are configured to 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 old capabilities. Um, I, I just wanted to add, like you mentioned, that uh, supposedly nobody is using ambient capabilities together uh, uh, inside of the of user sessions, but that's not quite true because we actually nowadays default to giving users cap uh, uh, this alarm or something. Uh, at login time, like the the one that allows you to wake up the the system, um, it was on request of desktop people because they wanted to have the ability that they can uh, uh, configure timers that wake up the system. So uh, we changed the default there. Um, so actually, every uh, uh, user that logs in gets that one capability passed through, and then we drop it again for all the services uh, because uh, we want that the system manager has a capability, but not necessarily the services themselves. But uh, I just wanted to correct this. Like, mm -hmm. um, it's actually now a, a, a standard case. Then again, uh, it's only very few apps that need this. Basically, timer apps that want to wake up the system when it's suspended. Like Sorry. Like so you might have broken this and nobody noticed. But uh, I don't know. Like, uh, I don't even know. Like, if, if GNOME, like it was for the GNOME 
clock app, basically. I'm not sure if that actually they started making use of the capability, but, um, uh, but yeah, just wanted to, to add this as context. Uh, you're probably you're right, uh, but uh, as you mentioned, uh, the capability isn't pa uh, passed to services. And what we do is we pass uh, some capabilities to services, and this is, uh, this is what, what the, the executor broke for us. You're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions? We have two minutes. Going once, going twice. Well, thank you.